Uh, my name is Emma Banks. I am the secondary digital learning uh, and computer science specialist at the Department of Education. And um, co-hosting with me today is uh, John, and I'll let him introduce himself, and he's going to get us going today. Hello, everybody. My name is John Graham. I'm the elementary digital learning specialist at the Maine Department of Education. So I'm so excited that um, we're finally able to do a session on Bitmoji classrooms. Um, this is something that Em and I have been kind of ta talking about um, for the past Oh, you muted yourself. I did mute myself. <laughs> We've been talking about this for the past month or so, so it's nice to kind of like nail down a time and be able to share this with folks. Um, I did want to mention, um, just because we had kind of registration stuff that was shifting as things were coming in, um, but we're not going to actually be going over the process of setting up Bitmoji. So if that isn't something that you've done yet, that is something that you'll kind of have to do on your own. You have to do it on, on a phone or an iPad. It isn't something that you can do on like a regular computer just yet, but once you do have a computer, you can leverage that. You can get a, an extension on Chrome that works really nicely. But I just want to say up front, we're not going to be going over kind of all the parts and pieces of setting up your Bitmoji. Um, and it's definitely something, it can be very time consuming in a fun way um, to get that up and running, but once you have it going, it's it's pretty easy. And then a lot of the things that we're going to be showing today are how to actually you know, put your Bitmoji into different places and scenarios and do some really cool stuff with it. So I'm going to share my screen. And because I've put together a Google slide. So there are number of different ways that you can do it. I'm going to be demonstrating with Google Slides. So if you are interested in this, we'll be sharing this, the link to this slide deck out to folks um, in an email after this session. So if there's anything in here that you're like, oh, I, I didn't quite catch that or whatever, we'll certainly share this slide deck out. And of course, Emma and I can always be caught via email um, and ask some questions if there's something in here that you didn't didn't quite understand. This session is going to be recorded. So if there is something that you did miss and you want to just go back and watch it at a later time, this recording will be available um, through the DOE's YouTube channel. Um, hopefully we can get that up for the end of the week. So these are the kind of things that I'm going to be covering for my portion of this presentation. Um, little riff on the world traveler sign here. Each of these are hyperlinked. So just as an example, if you were sharing something out with students, it's nice to have that interactivity built into this. So any of these links, you could click on them and it would take you to that page within this slide deck. All right, first thing that I want to talk about is just because sometimes folks when they're getting started, with that extension, I'm going to show you guys that extension right now. I have it up here, added into my Chrome. And it automatically picks up what your Bitmoji looks like. So if you do some updates on, say, your phone, I like to do a lot of custom changes for my guy. So if you do those, it's automatically going to pick it up on this Chrome extension once you've done that. So if you take a word, for example, education, and you type that in, there's actually no search specific to education that's going to come up. It's just going to give you some r very random images with the word education added in there. So what you can actually do if you want to get a broader selection, if you just cut and paste, it's going to do a new load, hopefully, and it will give you some new ones. So that's kind of a little trick. So if you're just looking for a variety of images, maybe put in a word to do a search for a particular Bitmoji and you're not really liking what you're finding, um, adding that cut and paste, do that over and over again, you can find a variety of different ones. Some that make sense, some that make no sense at all. So that can be funny as well. Um, next thing that I want to talk about, creating a background. 
So if you are making a background, it's fairly simple. You can see right here at the top, I have change background. So this one that I have right now, I left blank. So I can show you guys what changing a background looks like. If you click background, you can always just pick a color. So there are obviously the colors here. You can go down and find a custom color. So if you know the, um, know a specific color that you've um, been using. So like I have this eyedropper extension here. So I might have an image I'm trying to match that color to. So that's, that's a tool that I used to do that. Um, you can also do gradients. So if you've got a, two different colors that you wanna go between, this is another option. So just to show you what it looks like. I'm gonna pick this interesting yellow color. So you can see it automatically changes the background there. Going back into the background option, I can do choose image and I can look that up. So I had already looked up the Louvre. So if I wanted to do this Google image search for a background, that might be one thing that you can use. If you use bat the word background right in there, sometimes that can be helpful as well. Obviously, the Louvre, it's going to be showing an external image of it. Um, but you can also use um, things that are out on the web. You can upload your own photos in there if you want to. So if I picked this one and then click insert and done, you can see how that changes my background there. One of the issues, of course, here is that my text here is not very visible. And even if I change that, I don't know if that's going to necessarily fix that. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So those are kind of some considerations with the design that you're making. If you have a background that's really busy, you just want to be kind of careful that it's not difficult for the person reading it to be reading what it is that they need to be reading. Moving along. Transparent background. So this is um, something to be kind of thinking about. You can see that my pictures in here that I have, they're transparent and that there's nothing, oops, nothing in the box there. Like nothing like a box around it. If I wanted to find, so often use the example of a dolphin. So you can see like this dolphin picture here, if I drag that in, it's going to have this ocean and skyline behind it. It's going to be that orange box. One way that you can get around that is just adding the word transparent background. You can see some of these show up as white, which they kind of depends. It may or may not have an actual transparent background. If you see this checker pattern, that is kind of a, um, a design feature to indicate that something's a transparent background. So if you ever see that in any sort of programs, just know that's what that's indicating. If I click on this one, we can, I guess, give this one a try. We'll click and drag him over my classroom and see what it does. Yeah, so at least the way that it's pulled across there, obviously that's not a transparent background, at least not in that form. Some, some websites, they have images set up, so you actually have to go to the website and download it from the website. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, another thing to be trying if you go to the tools option in your search under color they have a transparent option i'm not sure when this was added somebody showed this to me recently but you can add the word transparent and i can actually delete the word transparent get a little different search and then we'll see again this is showing the checkered background so if I drag this guy, let's see, you can kind of see as I'm dragging it that there isn't a background there. So if I drag him over, there you go. Transparent background. So you can put that guy down here. So that's just kind of an example. If you're trying to find things, so furniture for your classroom, if you're building a classroom, um, that's often one of the challenges that people have is they're like, oh, I want to find something, but having those boxes behind the backgrounds creates some issues. So if you want to avoid that, those are a couple of tricks that you can, you can use. Um, if you go to another kind of search feature, 
to talk about. So GIFs are moving images. So these are a little bit different than videos. So you can see um, warming myself by the GIF fire right there. So going back to our search tools. So if I look up the word fire, transparent, you can see that there are a few on here. Some might be helpful, some might not be so helpful. Um, other thing that I can do is under my type, I have GIF and this should be much more helpful. Let's try this one from Giphy, see how this looks. So it's gonna load, so a GIF is an image. Oh, you can see it's got the transparent background there. So obviously this is a little more animated than the one that I have, but if I add that over there and it loads up, there's my little fire. I can add him over there, try not to singe my hair. Um, so that can be another tool to use. Thing that I do want to point out that I used for this one is I actually, with the image there, you can see I have it highlighted. I've got those blue boxes around it. If I double click that, those black lines indicate that I'm cropping it. So you can see that I did crop off some, some of that over there, the full size image. So that's kind of a thing to keep in mind as well. This one up here, if I crop, wanted, needed to crop that for some reason, so for example, I could crop that up to cut some of that fire off for some reason if I wanted that to be, to be squared. So that's kind of a way that you can use cropping. So if you want to cut things up so they maybe are behind something or if you want to hide a part of the image, that's a way to do that. So GIFs are a really nice feature to add in. Um, Obviously, it's very interactive and there are tons of GIFs out there. Oh, I should mention, um, so the websites I mentioned there, Giphy and Iv Image Flip are great places to find um, GIFs. I do want to mention though, Giphy, not necessarily student appropriate. So if you have students um, creating um, something like this using GIFs, just that's something to be aware of. Giphy does have some inappropriate content on it. Removing backgrounds. So I've got two different things here. I've got a, a still image um, and I've got this moving image. You can probably see that cow's mouth is slightly moving. So a couple tools that you can use to actually remove those backgrounds. And these don't always work perfectly well. It kind of depends on the image that you're working with. Um, but usually if you have something that's very obvious in the foreground and kind of the background and surroundings are very obvious, usually they'll work pretty well. I've found that that largely does depend on the, the image that you're using and you can make some adjustments as you're going along. So I wanted to show, um, oh, which one is it? It is remove remove dot bg so you can actually upload an image into that See if i can find probably i can find one that i've used for setting up this presentation i can find my tractor again because that worked very nicely and of course i'm not seeing it so let's take a different approach because you can drag and drop things in there. So I'm gonna clear this. And I'm gonna look up tractor. We'll try this one. See if this guy wants to pull across. Oop. No, thank you. We'll see if he wants to pull over into here. Loading there, so that one did a pretty good job. It looks like it might have taken out a few details. One of the things that you can do if you go to there's an edit button, and this allows you to do some restoration. So, if maybe there were some pieces that you wanted to bring back, you can actually add some of that back in if you want to, 
or if there are some pieces that you wanted to erase that maybe uh, for whatever reason, we want to get rid of the steering wheel, you can actually erase those. So that's kind of on my next slide to talk about that, but really easy feature if you want to go and touch a few things up. So see, actually, here's a good example. Right in the middle there, it doesn't take out that back part of the background. So you could actually make your brush small enough and zoom right in there and erase that if you felt that that was important to do. And they also have this neat background feature so you could put some, uh, some wacky backgrounds on here if you want to do that. So for those of you who are interested in green screen technology and maybe are lacking a green screen or some of the equipment to do that, um, background.bg is a great tool to help with doing that. The other one I want to show is unscreen. This allows you to upload GIFs right in there. Let's try this one. I haven't tried this one before, but it's a GIF sitting right there. Same premise, except a GIF is a series of images played in sequence. So that Newton's Cradle that I had had a yellow background. So it's going to load that up and strip out that yellow background. Give that just a second to load. So then I could actually download this and I could use that in my presentation if I wanted to. Um, so that's kind of getting on to the next one. Um, yep, so I think I kind of just went through this process. So you can pull an image in, you can go into the edit, erase and restore. If you go to erase, you can erase that background. So in this case, I wanted to get rid of those words. I wanted to get rid of that rock and just have this still image of me laboring away in a coal mine. So that's kind of the trick to doing that. And I should see, where did that guy go? So this, I don't think you can pull, well, maybe you can, I think you can pull right over. Yeah, you can, you've got to download it. So for that one, you're going to have to download the GIF file and pull over. GIFs don't always like to, um, don't always like to drag and drop like that. All right, next one, adding videos. So you can add a lot of content and embed it right into a Google slide. So video is a nice example of one that you can do fairly easily. So if you have YouTube videos that you like that you want to just embed right in there, um, that certainly is something that you can do. It's just kind of a matter of either going to YouTube. So I've got this video that I like. I'm going to copy the link up there pop back over here. And if I go to insert video, I could actually search for that. I found that this search, this kind of built in YouTube search feature can be a little bit challenging sometimes to use. Um, we'll see if it can find, can find that previews of coming attractions. So, Maybe that's it. One of the things that's tricky is you can't just like click and preview the video. So that's one of the things that can be kind of tricky. If you do have the YouTube video, so I've got to get another tab, I can actually just paste it right in here and then it's going to pop up and it's all set. So I can use it that way. Also, if you have other videos of your own that you want to add in, so maybe a video that you've recorded, if you haven't uploaded it to YouTube, if you are looking for a way to do that, you can upload it to a Google Drive and you can actually pull those right from your Google Drive. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you're looking to add those in, a couple of tricks for doing that, then you just hit select. It's going to add in. Does the one I've already got in there. You can preview it. And this also has a nice built in cropping tool. So if you want to crop down to a certain section of the video, that's kind of a trick that you can use. This also allows you to certainly move this around and kind of get it set up the way that you want. So I did the little drive and movie effect there to kind of give it a little visual dynamic. Hyperlinking. So if you're interested in hyperlinking anything, so it could be 
text that you want to hyperlink or maybe objects and images that you've created. So I could hyperlink myself if I wanted to. If I X out of this, that becomes visible. So anything that you click on, you have this insert link option. You also can right click and you have a link option in there, I think. Maybe you don't. Maybe if you have something highlighted. There you go. With text you do. And control K is the key command for that. So say I wanted to hyperlink the word hyperlink. One of the things that's nice is if you have um, a website, sometimes it will automatically like do a search for that website and you don't actually have to search for the website. It will actually pull that link if you have that listed out. You also have this tool to link to different slides within your slide. So if you're trying to create your Google Classroom, kind of to have a hyperdoc interactivity feel to it, this is a nice way that you can do that. So if you want students to be able to move around in that place, this is something that you can do. I can actually buzz back to my first slide. So that's what I did. I highlighted all these and you can see, even though it's just going in order, it allows students to, or whomever, to click on these and to jump right to that slide. So that's kind of the quick and dirty on hyperlinks. It's real, it's very straightforward. I've seen people set up bookshelves where you've got books on there and you can click and it will take you to a read aloud of a book. That's one of the examples that I've really liked. If you had um, documents or worksheets or something like that, that you had living somewhere online, you could set up a hyperlink right to those things. So nice variety of options for things that you could hyperlink. Just basically adds in some interactivity for what you're creating. Adjusting perspective of objects. So one of the questions that I've had from people, sometimes folks want to create a Google Classroom that looks like their classroom, but obviously your classroom isn't two dimensional. It's very three dimensional and people want to make it look like their classroom. So that might mean finding um, a carpet maybe that you have in your classroom. I know an art teacher had a really distinctive carpet that she found and fixed. So for her students, they saw that carpet and it's like, oh my gosh, this looks so much like your classroom, which was really cool. Um, so if you have things like posters on your wall or pictures, clocks, stuff like that, if you can find those pictures or a close approximation, you can actually shift those. So I on here have this Lunapic and I'll kind of walk through this process where you can, one of the features is you can adjust the perspective and you have these little red dots that show up and you can actually manipulate things. So you can see like I took this original image and I adjusted it so it looks like it's sitting on that wall. So I'm gonna to go to Lunapic and upload. I mean, Lunapic has a ton of um, image options that you can use. So don't feel like you're limited to just using it for this one function. Oh, can I find that one? Maybe I can't. Let's Let's use this one then. And it's uploading. Transparent. I know it's transparent image. This will be interesting. So if I go to adjust, I go down to perspective. It's going to load up these red dots. So to get that effect of putting it on my right wall, I'm going to want to make this side come in like that. I'm going to want to tighten up these a little bit. I am not sure what that black is that it's creating. That'll be interesting to see. You want to try to have that line as straight as you can, but it can be a little tricky. We're going to click apply. Hmm. That looks a little wacky. I drag and drop. No, it's like I can. Let's drop this in here and see what it looks like.
No, that doesn't quite. <laughs> what do you think, Emma? Does that look? It doesn't look like it quite did what I wanted it to, but maybe it did. <laughs> Bad. I actually love this slide. Well, thank you. <laughs> very, uh, very artsy. So, um, I'm going to try that one more time, and I'm going to try to get something that's an actual box, and we'll see if that wants to play nicer. Oh, let's see. Let's use this. Let's use this one and see if this wants to work. Adjust perspective. Wow, this one is the big picture. Uh, at least get it in one place. That is that is about right. Although it's probably not as legible as I'd like to be. I have noticed that sometimes it does this where it adds in this gray streak. I will show you how to to fix that. So you can see when I'm trying to drop it, it grab grabs in that shard of gray. So your cropping tool, you can just crop and tighten that up. So now I've got this and I can adjust that. So if I wanted it to fit right over that image, the, the frame there, obviously it's a little bit off. So I might wanna go back make some adjustments if I wanted to have kind of that right look. But you can see that it gives that perspective that it's it's on the wall. So funny little technique. Definitely one that I think, <laughs> think of all the things that I've shown, that's the one that probably takes, takes the most kind of energy and can be the most challenging. But I found people that are, get really into making a Bitmoji classroom that looks like their own, they're willing to put in that time. All right, and then my last one I wanted to share is using Animoji. So I did link in here where it says check for compatibility. So this isn't compatible. So um, my phone actually was not compatible for my phone, but it was compatible for my wife. So I borrowed her phone and made my little uh, Safari dude. So it's actually just, just the head there. So what you do is you actually create create that and then you um, save it onto your phone and then it can take some can take some time to transfer it across but you can use unshare if it's grabbing a background that you want to get rid of and then this character that I placed on there I can actually slide that over so you can see so you can see that it actually did have my head on it but I cropped my head off <laughs> so that was the way that I did that little effect there. So Animoji, if you've never seen it before, it actually does, uses face facial recognition. And so I'm mouthing the words, oh my God, for any of you Magnum PI fans out there. Um, mouth that kind of, uh, it doesn't have the audio. You could add in the audio if you wanted to, if you send that across um, on Animoji, it does make those little audio recordings. This video over here is actually a walkthrough of that whole process. This is where I got the idea for this. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, I kind of felt like it was a real, it was too cool not to share, but it certainly is one of those things that not everybody can do easily. So if you can't do it, I'm sorry. Um, if you can do it, it is kind of fun to play around with that. I actually, I will say, I prefer Bitmoji to Animoji because as somebody with very curly hair, there's not Animoji hair, I think, that does my own hair justice. So that was, that was my only beef I had with, with Animoji. So I know that was a ton of different kind of ideas. 
again, I'll share out this slideshow so you can go and kind of reference back. The video is gonna be recorded so you can reference back to the video. Hopefully we'll get that up before the end of the week. Definitely something that's fun to play around with and I'll look forward to hearing from people. And I'll let Emma take over for the last, last few minutes or whatever time remains. And if people have questions that they put in the chat, then I'll try to respond to those now. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, so you're seeing my little bit emoji scene, right? I just want to make sure I have two screens. So, yes, John. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure before I start talking. Um, so I took a little bit of a different approach with trying to create a Bitmoji scene. I wanted to create kind of like a resource wall of sorts. And so um, I used Google Slide to get it going. I originally started in Canva, but I just kept getting kind of frustrated and knew that Google Slides would be like a little bit more user friendly and easy. Um, especially because when you go to do um, a Bitmoji insert like this, you can't just drag and drop it. You have to like use your keyboard and do the copy or command um, control and paste. So it just adds a little bit. And if you're used to already dragging and dropping, it's just like over and over you fail. So I ended up switching back to Google Slide, but I really wanted to do like a poster of sorts that could be saved as a PDF. So what I did was I went into um, my page setup and I adjusted it to a custom page size so that it'd be eight and a half by 11 so that um, when I saved it as a PDF, it would fill the PDF uh, pretty nicely. And so here is the PDF. I just went ahead and did a download as PDF. And then I opened it on my computer. So it's just opened in Chrome right now, but I could open it um, in Adobe or any other PDF viewer that I wanted to. Um, and I, so what I did to create this was I made uh, different, I took little images and kind of turned them into hyperlinks and then created my tags for them. One of the things I really, like about what I've done here is that I made both the text here and the image here um, a link. So if you're hovering in this area at all, you'll get to the, the right place. You don't have to make sure you're hovering over the image or make sure you're hovering over the text because I've hyperlinked both of these to the exact same place. I originally tried grouping them and hyperlinking the group, but Google slide actually would not let me hyperlink a group of things. So I ended up just using the same hyperlink for both of them so that it would still be, it would still increase that accessibility for folks. So I've got a few resources here. I'm not gonna get into them in depth because we've already given you a lot of information and these are kind of additional things that you could do once you get more familiar with Bitmoji. However, I wanna point out two things before I get going. And we will share this out um, with you all along with the PowerPoint. So you'll have this as well. But I have created kind of like a start here at the bottom, which I'm realizing that when you open this, it's at the bottom and you can't really see it. You have to scroll down. So maybe I'll put like a call out or something before I share this to let you know that it's here. But this will link you to um, a video on how to get started with Bitmoji, how to, you know, getting the app, getting the actual, um, the pieces going that we were talking about kind of already having established when we um, as a baseline for this session. So if you need to go backwards and kind of get set up before you can interact with that down here is um, where you want to be. You want to start there. Additionally, um, we're going to use this image at, uh, this PDF and we'll link to the YouTube video recording of this session. So you'll have that um, ability to kind of click right here and that will take you to our YouTube session as well. So just talking over a few of the features that are on this that are pretty cool uses of Bitmoji. Um, people are creating virtual escape rooms. So you kind of have to go through a series of steps in order to escape the virtual room. Um, some of them are really just very creative and uh, that link will take you to a video that kind of talks a little bit about that. 
Um, then we've got a resource for animating your Bitmoji. So this is like three, uh, they use uh, Snapchat. Snapchat has partnered with Bitmoji and you can make your Bitmoji dance. You can make it sweep the floor. You can make it jump up and down. There's different signs that it'll hold up. And it, you basically use your camera and the Bitmoji comes up as a 3D image on, on the camera. And you can take a video recording and either have your background stay the way it is, or you would take that and put it through that um, remove background tool that John shared with you to remove the background of it and just have the dancing image or the whatever you have your Bitmoji doing. So that walks you through the process of how to animate your Bitmoji, which is um, pretty cool. A few, few extra steps involved to actually make it happen, but once it does, it really kind of helps to make your Bitmoji come alive, which is, I thought was pretty cool. Then there are um, some, some Teachers have enjoyed Bitmoji so much for remote learning that they're actually starting to um, want to create stickers. So you could create just digital stickers or badges using Bitmoji, or you could actually um, set it up so that you're going to create and print stickers and create them for your in-person classroom. So there's all sorts of options there, but that is uh, talks a little bit about that. And then there's this really awesome feature where you can actually get Bitmojis uh, like sets of you and your friends or you and your co-teacher or you know like John and I can get we could set this up and we could have um, bitmojis that already have both of us in them instead of us having to toss our bitmojis back and forth which is what we've been doing right now. Um, so there's I thought that that was pretty cool as far as if you're doing anything with other folks and you want to be able to use bitmojis together interchangeably that makes it really super easy to do that. Um, then we have using Bitmoji in Google Classroom um, and creating like a, a class header for your uh, for your Google Classroom. And that is a resource that talks a little bit about that. And you can see in the icon um, really faintly that John's little photo is in there. Um, and then this article right here, this is just an article informational um, of like what is coming up and coming for Bitmoji. Uh, their Snapchat has partnered with them and they're working on developing something called Bitmoji TV, where you could have your Bitmoji friends all kind of have this series of adventures that you can, uh, that, you know, you can watch and I don't interact with in some ways. It was a really interesting article. And then it talks about some of the other new developments that have been happening with Bitmoji, kind of talking about how they're looking at using it moving forward um, as it gains popularity because it has skyrocketed in popularity as I'm sure many of you are probably well aware of. <laughs> um, so just some resources to kind of check out once you get through some of those steps. If you're, if you're just starting with Bitmoji, then some of these things are probably um, besides this, you know, beautiful link here at the bottom for getting started, then some of these things are things you would want to come back to once you have gotten some of the basics down of removing backgrounds and, um, you know, copy and pasting images and some of those, some of those functions that John was sharing with us. So we have um, plenty of time if anyone has any questions. Um, thoughts or any cool things that they've done with their Bitmoji that they want to share. And then I, I know, John, I think you had a couple of other things you wanted to. I do, but I can, I can wait if, if somebody, I know, um, I think one of the things that's interesting is people are trying to figure out ways to kind of leverage this and tie it into um, tools or things that they're already using. Seesaw, I mean, Initially, where I started seeing Bitmoji was teachers using um, Seesaw and kind of pulling in their images to make things for Seesaw. So I think definitely as an elementary person, I think that's one of the things that I've seen a lot um, in terms of how people have been using, using Bitmoji previously. And I think we'll probably see kind of more of that develop over time. Um, I know Jeff Sear, who is on this call, hiding somewhere, had mentioned recently that Seesaw had kind of expanded some of their capabilities to maybe work a little bit better with Bitmoji. So interesting development that totally makes sense. And I think the kind of uncertain nature of what's gonna happen in the fall, I think some people are trying to figure out what are some things that they can learn about and develop. So it either they are using it you know, whether they were back in school or out of school or 
going back and forth. And I think investing some time in setting up a interactive Bitmoji classroom to me makes a lot of sense because I feel like it's something that you can use regardless of, you know, what our what our school situation might be. So if anyone wants to share, we certainly can take a moment for that. Um, I did see in the chat people were talking about filtering YouTube videos. I put in a couple links for some other tools. So if you're interested in using YouTube videos in some form, but you have some concerns around um, advertisements or just kids getting sucked into watching YouTube video after YouTube video, those are a couple tools that you can use. A little bit different, um, each of them. So, you know, you can always try them out and see which ones you like. Oh, Jeff shared quick video on adding links to Seesaw. So that is in the chat and I'm gonna definitely be checking that out later on. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Um, all right, so next thing I wanted to add I might need to take back over the screen in just a second. <clears throat> Is I was setting up a, let's see, whoops. I didn't take over the screen. Here we go. So I had set up this form. So I made the header, I actually used it in Google Draw. I can show that. So I just found something that said Google form, like template or something like that. So that is kind of one of the tricks if you're making something like form or Google Classroom and you're wanting to use these. A lot of times Canva actually would be really good for this. If you're looking to use Bitmoji across some of those different platforms, they have really fantastic templates that if nothing else are all sized correctly so you can work right within them. Um, but this is one that I found just doing a search and it was all sized up nicely. So I was able to add in, add in these and then download that and then pull that into this form. So my goals for this session, so we've got a, a bunch of people on here. And if people are interested, I don't know to what level people have set up their Bitmoji already, but I thought it'd be fun to set up a form and people could actually upload that Bitmoji image. And then I can, in my slideshow, before I share it out, I can actually um, populate that. So make like a little class roster, class photo type thing. I've seen some people doing this for um, some different things recently, um, conferences or just different tra teacher trainings and things like that. So I know a lot of times, People will have, you know, kind of small, smaller conferences, a cohort or something like that, and try to do a big group photo is really cool. So living in the times that we're living in, this might be a nice way to, to do that in a, different, in a different way. Certainly something if you are not able to be with your full class in the fall, or you're not able to, you know, certainly crowd together and do a group photo together because of social distancing, this might be a fun way to kind of recreate that that folks might really like and as a Simpsons fan it makes me think of some of those like Simpsons collages that I've seen that have all of the Simpsons characters in them so I'm going to share um, this link out and if folks want to take some time to do that either today or whenever you get your bitmoji set up um, that's certainly something that you can do and I'll put that as the last page in my slideshow. Um, so it's bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y slash, all one word, no uppercase letters, bitmoji, class photo. And I will probably be using this for a number of different purposes <laughs> in the future. I'm thinking that this might be something that will be fun to be using. Um, 
just in case you're not familiar with kind of the concept that we're talking about, I just wanted to pull up a couple of examples here. So there's all sorts of ways that um, schools and teachers and classes have leveraged these. And some of them are just really kind of cool. And so when he says using them several different ways, this is, these are some of the examples of like how people have done that. Um, and then there's the more, I'll show you the more traditional cross photo. So it's being done a lot of different ways. And I think that some of them are really cool. Like some of them are kind of a Where's Waldo scavenger hunt style. And then some of them are these like static class photos. And I think John, you pointed out a really great use of it. And that's the idea that like when we can't take class photos, you know, all together tight like that, you know, this does provide some of, some of that same feeling. For sure. So we'll see. I, I set that form up so you can um, add in several different pictures. So I guess I'll just have to see what we get from folks. And depending on what we get back, it might end up being like a class photo like that, or it might end up being a Where's Waldo because people are going to be uh, having all kinds of wacky backgrounds. We'll see. Maybe I'll do one of each. Who knows? But I think that's, that's one of the fun ways fun ways to leverage it. I think I should point out one of the challenges um, with the Bitmoji app, I think is that you can do it with an iPad, I believe. I haven't used an iPad myself, but I think, um, I think a lot of people use a phone, but you can't do a lot of those um, modifications on a, on a computer. Once you have your account set up, have your Bitmoji set up, you can do those things on, on the computer. You've seen with the extension, you can go in and search those and pull those things in. So that might be one of the kind of logistical challenges if you're trying to pull together students, but it might be a fun thing to see a school create something like this to share out with students. Please, 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 if your school does this, if you go back to your school and say, all right, everybody, let's do this. Um, if that is something you do and share it out with your students, please send me an email and share that with me. I'd really like to see that. I think that's something not only I, Emma and I would like to see this, I think it would be a fun thing for the DOE to share out in some way on our social media. I think we're really trying to find those different kinds of creative ways that educators are trying to connect with, connect with kiddos. So definitely a, a nice, nice route to take. So we're at about 10 minutes of 11. I guess if we have any last questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, that people might want to address. I was kind of thinking at the beginning of kind of planning this, that there is always the potential that Emma and I might do another one following up. I actually think it would be fun to pull together um, some different teachers for them to share things that they've created. Always love to highlight teachers the main that are doing doing great things. So that might be, you know, the next level is following up with some people and seeing what they're creating and sharing that out. It's a little different from what Emma and I are doing as people at the DOE versus what people are doing in their actual school. So something to be thinking about. Um, so if you haven't got a chance to grab this link, that's what it is. You can jot that down. Is case sensitive. And that'll take you to that form and feel free to just send those along. I did ask for names on there. I have zero intention of, you know, putting those out in a public way. But if you, um, if you decide that you, you know, want to share something on here, you could actually just, you know, share your name with me, maybe, maybe your school if you want to. I was more just thinking that if there was 
for some reason I want to get in touch with some people. I do have the registration list so I can find emails in there. But that might be a nice way if there's something cool that somebody shares or whatever, I'd want to reach out to some people that way. So I'm not going to attach your name on anything that I'm my um, class photo here, but. Oh, so someone's saying, I think that they did it. So I can check my form and see um, if I've received those. Yep, so I've got a couple responses. So what's really nice about this Google um, Google Forms feature is that you can just set it, you can have it set up to receive files. So people can just grab those images and share them and it will store them in a Google Drive folder. So you can just go there, download them all and populate whatever you need to populate. So I guess that is about it for today. So certainly you can reach out to Emma or myself if you have some questions. We've tried to give a lot of resources. Again, this video's recording is going to be uploaded to the DOE's um, YouTube channel, maybe even by the end of the week. Um, we're gonna provide a contact hour for this. So we've gotta get that all hashed out. So um, certainly feel free to share this with other other folks, if folks are, oh, I, you know, I had wanted to see, because we had a lot of people during other trainings we've done over the summer have asked about, oh, when you do a Bitmoji classroom thing, let me know or whatever. So if it comes up with somebody, they're interested in getting going, um, certainly feel free to pass this video link along to them. And any of the resources that Emma and I shared, we'll be sending out the slideshows and all of that. So ton of really fun opportunities there, I think. And it'll be interesting to see if people take off with this and are able to share back fun examples from their own schools. I always love seeing that. And we'll be sharing um, all these resources via email. Um, it, when you registered for the session, we have a list of emails. So you'll just get an email from us that has all of these relevant links for you. Awesome. Well, successful session, I guess. Have a great afternoon, everyone. All right. Have a fantastic afternoon. Bye.